Welcome back, Toolkit for Rape Recovery. So good to be back. It's been a while, a very long while actually, almost a year and a half long. And I guess I needed this time to deal with this monster called filing a complaint. Filing a complaint, how, why, and what the hell is it good for? It's nice to see through you what I went through in the last year and a half and how I changed and I guess I needed this time. This episode about filing a complaint challenged me a lot. As you know, I went through three different incidents of sexual abuse and rape, and I never actually filed a complaint until the past year. I knew I cannot finish Toolkit for Rape Recovery without making an episode about filing a complaint, and I knew I cannot make an episode about filing a complaint without going through the process myself. So in the past year, I did so in two different cases. When I was five, it was an immigrant worker working for my parents. My parents went to the police and there was some sort of process, but I'm not sure there was actually a complaint filed. I was a five-year-old child. I think he was deported, but they don't really know what happened there. When I was 15, it was someone from the Labour Party. I was then in the Youth Labour Party and he was from the adult branch. And by the time he gained enough courage to tell a friend. When I advised him whether or not I should file a complaint, he said, you know, they're gonna make a Lolita out of you, they're gonna make you a slut, regardless of the fact that I was a virgin at the time. And his advice for me was to not file a complaint, to just let it be, let it go. So I haven't complained. And for a very long time, I've been carrying a serious sense of guilt for not complaining. Maybe because I didn't complain, maybe continue doing it to other people. By the time I reached 28, I realized I cannot legitimately file a complaint. I mean, I can file a complaint, but the chances for that to go somewhere are non-existing because of the law of limitation. A law of limitation is 10 years. I was a minor, I was 15, so it means 10 years from 18. When I was 20, I was drug raped in a wedding. It took me a very long time to realize it was drug rape. I was blaming myself, I thought I was not in a good mental state, I thought I was drinking too much, I thought I'm not normal, I thought I'm just fucked up. And I didn't complain on that case as well because how can you go and prove that you were drug raped when you only realize you were drug raped 10 years later? Obviously waking up in a corridor of an hotel, being unconscious with a man inside of me that I don't know doesn't say anything. In a certain stage I realized that in order to break this chain I need to make a change. And this event as well is protected by the law of limitation. It happened when I was 20, I'm 35 today. Besides the law of limitation, there's no proof. At the time, more and more women started complaining in different letters, L and M and N, and I remember myself hoping for the one brave enough woman to complain on one of the guys that attacked me so I could join her. It took me quite a while to realize maybe I shouldn't wait for someone else to do that, but I should just go on and file a complaint myself. So, a year ago I decided that there's no other choice and I need to go to the police and file a complaint. I knew the law of limitation and the fact they have no proof are against me. But it was very important for me to file a complaint from two different reasons. The first reason was I wanted the police to have the names of the men who raped or abused me in case someone else dares to complain about them, their name is already registered as a possible sex offender. The other reason was more personal. To a certain level I felt that even if the law of limitation is there, even if there's no evidence, even if the justice system could not do me justice, there is an importance for the fact that I went there and I demanded my justice. I went out there and said something wrong has been done to me. I want you to make it right. I so I went to the police and I was quite lucky. I had women investigators that were quite sensitive. They investigated sexual abuse victims in the past. And still, it's really, really difficult. You have to sit there in a small room trying to remember all the visual images you did your best to never, ever, ever remember. And suddenly you don't remember details that have been in your mind all of your life and you couldn't get rid of them no matter how hard you tried. It's a really weird and frustrating experience and it takes you back whether you want to or not. Since time I went and complained on the rape that happened when I was 20, but then when I was telling them the story, I told them the story of me being 15 as well. And then I asked them to file a complaint for the other guy of 15. They said they will separate the complaints themselves, so I don't need to come again. But obviously it didn't work. And every time they ask you to come and file a complaint, you have all the symptoms all over again. You suddenly feel the neck really tight, throwing up, and all those feelings that we've been trying to hide. Because we've done everything in our power to block that, to be in denial and not remember and all of a sudden we need to remember each and every detail. I think it's very important for our healing process. Having said that, it's really not easy. 
After the complaint, I was called for a confrontation with the guy that drug raped me. The last time I saw him was when I woke up from being unconscious in a corridor of an hotel and he's inside of me and I pushed him away. It was probably the hardest thing that I had to do in my life. And you know what the worst thing? Is it for a second there he made me doubt myself? And he obviously blamed me in everything I wanted, I made a scene, I asked him to kiss me. Obviously I've not showed that, but for a second he did make me doubt myself. <sighs> I was very lucky to be supported by the Israeli version of Rain Center and I had the legal advisor with me there. I sat with him in the same room. She was there in the room with us, she was sitting between us. And that was quite big help. So he's sitting in the room with this guy that I know he drug raped me and I have nothing to say to this asshole except how fucking disgusted I am by him. And as you can see it creates an effect and I cannot say that the confrontation was a great help. Before the confrontation they told me there is a good chance that this confrontation is the only thing that you're gonna have which is somehow close to a closure. So that's your opportunity to say whatever you have to say, whatever is on your heart. But who the fuck is it that I'll, I'll talk to him? Who is it that I'll think of what I want to tell him? You know, you raped me. Like, it doesn't worth my time. It doesn't worth me thinking of what do I want to tell him. <sighs> so why should we complain? First of all, it's not that obvious. If you feel you're weak, if you feel you don't have the support system, if you feel your energy is as low as it is and you need everything you have to just maintain yourself and take good care of yourself and don't complain now. And fuck all those people that would later ask you why did you only remember now. Take care of yourself. Check with yourself and be honest whether you have the energies to deal with that and it demands a lot of energy. So why should we go back and look into all those images and visuals and sounds and smells we did all in our power to forget. In a personal level, I think it's in order to regain our freedom and know that we demanded our justice. If you think you can find the strength needed, if you feel you can find the support you need, whether it's a good friend, whether it's a sexual abuse and rape center, support center, hotline, ideally someone who went through that before, I really, really, really encourage you and support you to go out and file a complaint to say enough. I know it's still really difficult. I know that the women and men who they're complaining now still get a lot of really nasty things going their way. And it's really hard to deal with that and it demands a lot, a lot of strength. That's why I'm asking you to check with yourself very carefully. Do you have what it takes to go through that? But if you do have what it takes, I strongly believe that filing a complaint that all of us filing complaints is the only way we can change the situation in which we live in. Unless we create a situation in which more women dare to complain than not, the situation will just remain as it is. And that's quite bad for all of us. Finally, I think we have some sort of a karmatic contract. We come here and we go through some experiences that shape the way we are, and in a way our responsibility is to demand our justice. So in a way, if we were raped, but we don't go out and demand our justice, it's almost as we're not playing our part of the deal. We've already been raped or sexually abused in a way. The only thing we can do is actually throw the ball back to the court of our abuser and make him go into defense. Many times, the people around us will try to protect us and the first response will be to discourage us from filing a complaint. Why do you need that? Come on, just let go. Why do you need to deal with that? It doesn't come from a bad place. Those people do have our best interest at heart. The only thing is that they don't necessarily know what that is. They don't want us to be in the media. They don't want us to be in the eye of the storm. They want to protect us. They don't want people to say things about us. And in a way they're right. It's really not great fun to go through that. But what they don't understand is that we never stop going through that in a way. But the thing is that if we won't do anything, it will never change. And we really want that reality to change. And it is changing as well, so we should just go on. In order for us to let go and move on and really believe we deserve good and we should treat ourselves good, we have to stop for a second and say we were abused. What was done to us was wrong and it shouldn't happen and we should demand our justice. And then you can really let it go or at least start letting go. But that's in the next couple of episodes. The day after filing a complaint, I went back home and I was trying to take good care of myself, take a nice bath, prepare myself some nourishing meal, regain my strength back. Obviously, it brought up a lot of things I was 
doing my best to forget. Flashbacks and a lot of the trauma kind of came up. There were visuals that I couldn't remember in the police that suddenly came up, things that they managed to remember and now I couldn't let go of. And then I basically went back to denial. I kind of put it aside and never checked what happened with my complaint. They give you this piece of paper that you can go online and check the status of your complaint and I never went back to check it. I folded it, put it in a drawer and kind of went back to my life. And one day, while I'm shooting a movie, I suddenly get those two envelopes that have been in the post and follow me, so they've been looking for me for a few months now. And I see it's a letter from the police. I knew to begin with that my complaints are not likely to actually get into charges. And still, I open the envelopes, and I see that one of them was closed because of the law of limitation, and the other because of lack of proof. And even though I knew it on advance, there's something really, really painful when it actually happens. And I fold the paper back, put it back in the envelope, put it aside, and never look at it again, until now. And for a few months, this really nasty response, which was the most expected thing ever, sits there in the drawer next to me. And I don't do anything with it. I don't think about that. I don't mention it to no one. I don't say to anyone I got an answer. I just go back into a denial state. Obviously, by the time those months went through, I was too late to appeal or to object to the decision. And to be totally honest, I don't think I would have objected or appealed anyway, because I was just a bit too tired to go through that again. And a few months go by and I realize that I have to go back finally and finish episode 10 about being so frustrated from the fact that there was no charges filed and knowing that my complaint process was in a way getting to a dead end. And it took me a very long time to realize that that was part of the story. And I went to meet Adas Steif, an Israeli journalist who is a huge pioneer in all the sexual abuse and rape arena. I told her really frustrated about the letters I got and that I'm debating whether or not they should expose their names. She was the one that told me that if I do expose your name, I'm the one that needs to be able to protect herself in case of a defamation claim. I don't truly really believe they would ever dare go and sue me for defamation. However, to be totally honest, I much rather focus now on my energies in finishing the toolkit rather than having this fight with them. I might still decide to expose them one day, but at the moment I just want to finish this episode and this web series. But she also pointed out that there was a reason why I got those two results. Most of us, when we finally get enough courage to go out and file a complaint on what's been done to us, those are the answer we would get. Either law of limitation, or no proof, or no interest to the public, those are generally speaking the results we would have to deal with. It's frustrating, I know, and although you know in advance that that is what you're going to get, still, it's really fucking blow. So why should we file a complaint? If we'll complain more, if we'll change the statistics, if we'll make a reality in which most of us do their change, we'll create a reality in which complaining is easier and more obvious, in which we do it faster and we have more proof. And eventually we'll have more complaints, we'll have more charges and hopefully within time less and less sexual abuse and rape events. It's a lot to ask, so I say it again. You're the only one who knows whether or not you have the energy and the strength needed to go through that. It can take a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of strength. It took me over a year and a half to be able to get back here and tell you what I went through. And to be totally honest, if it wasn't for Toolkit, I'm not even sure I would go through and file a complaint. Only you know whether or not you can do that. Only you know whether or not you have the strength and the energy and the support needed to go and file a complaint. Don't be hard on yourself, be soft on yourself, love yourself, treat yourself well and trust yourself that when the time comes, when the right time comes, you will go out and demand your justice. There is another outlet, a civilian lawsuit, which I don't know a lot about because I didn't go through personally, but I do know some people that went through that. It's a good way to deal with the law of limitation. I think also proving should be easier than in criminal law. However, as I said, I don't know a lot about that. If any of you filed a civilian lawsuit and you want to share your experience, please write it in the notes here below. Any information would be great. To sum it all up, currently the situation of filing a complaint is still quite nasty, but it's way better than it used to be. It's a really difficult experience. It's a journey that makes you remember things you were trying to forget and a lot of flashbacks and images and physical responses. It's not easy. If you feel you have the strength, the support and the energy to go through that, 
I think it's really, really, really important to we'll file complaints and we change the reality as we know it. If we complain more, it becomes more legitimate to complain. If it becomes more legitimate to complain, people will complain closer to the event. If they complain closer to the event, we might have more proof. And if we have more proof, we might be able to get to more and more charges. If we want to change this reality, both for ourselves to know that we demanded our justice and for others to know that we made sure those assholes are not out there to attack them, we have to make a change. I cannot stress enough. You are the only one who knows whether or not you can do that, whether or not you want to do that, whether or not you can do it now. And you're the only one who knows what's good for you. It can take a very, very long time. It took me a year and a half in order to digest this experience and come back and share it with you. So don't be hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Even if you feel like you will never be ready to file a complaint or you feel you'll be able to file a complaint but not now and you need more time to get stronger. Listen to yourself and not to anyone else. You're the only one who know and you know best. Finally, we're done with episode 10. This episode challenged me. It took me a very, very, very long time to complete it. After recording episode 10 in English for the first time, it accidentally was deleted, so I'm recording it in the second time now, and it seems like it was the longest episode to ever make. I'm very happy to be with you here from the other end. I get to see through Toolkit and through you what I went through and what a change I went through visually, and I really like what I see to sum it all up. It was miserable. It was hell to go through the process of filing a complaint. It was difficult, challenging, disgusting, painful, flashbacks, everything. But I'm so happy to sit here with you from the other side and say I demanded my justice. I would not let anyone hurt me and not demand my justice anymore. And from that strong place, I got to say it was totally worth it. There is something really strengthening and healing about this journey, and I'm very grateful for that. Episode 10, Filing Complaint. There was meant to be only one more, but we have a tiny bit of a shift. Two more episodes to go. Next episode, Forgiveness, mainly to yourself. I cannot believe I finally managed to finish episode 10. This episode sucked the life out of me and I couldn't get rid of that and I recorded it and it was deleted and I recorded it again and it was a never ending story. Episode 10 is over, episode 10 is over, episode 10 is over, episode 10 is over.